Welcome back to another episode of Mad Props. Thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast. Um, I have some bad news to start off the podcast. Uh, if you saw the post recently, I am sick. I actually, so let's, I guess we can go over that in a second. So, but I am sick. We'll go over that in a second. Before we start, make sure you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and X at uh, mad props pod actually actually hold up hold up i know it's crazy everyone's like whoa there's so much going on it just started i can't keep up so we're gonna let's do a soft reset here first of all on x slash twitter it is now just schnabel studios so if you want to follow mad props on twitter follow at schnabel studios on twitter and you can find everything mad props and all the videos we put up and anything else we're going to do. All right, so just that. If you want to follow Mad Props on Instagram or Facebook, at Mad Props Pod or Schnabel Studios is the best way to do it. The same thing is posted on each one. So you can find everything. Really, if you just want to follow Schnabel Studios on everything, you can find everything you're ever going to want, Schnabel Studios-wise, on both of those. So go ahead and follow that. Thank you guys so much for listening. We appreciate you guys sharing and listening. We got a really good follow or a good listen last time. So we're hoping for another one. Uh, episode here so let's have let's do this let's start the credits let's get into the show this is mad props welcome to mad props guys welcome back so i'm gonna pick right up where i left off of my I have been sick, so I, I've been sick recently. I got sick on, like, Thursday-ish into Friday, um, and then this weekend I was I was really sick. Um, but before we, before we really get into that, um, I decided I've – been, I've been talking with people and doing some research and really trying to figure some stuff out with this podcast, and we decided – uh, me and people I was talking. Well, I guess they didn't decide, but you, how, with the help of other people, I've decided to move Mad Props to Wednesday mornings uh, from this point forward. So this is a Wednesday morning. You you may be listening to, um, or if you're listening to this, it came out on a Wednesday morning. So from this point on, that is going to be the release date of Mad Props. It's just a better. Um, it's just a better time to do it for us. And it gives me a little more time to get things together for Mad Props. So, um, as you may have noticed, there haven't been as many guests. Um, we haven't had as many interviews. It's been a lot more solo. I, I truly blame that on being on Mondays just because, you know, the when weekend comes around, people just can't get to it. And during the week, it gets a little tough. So now on Wednesdays, it should be a little easier for us to start figuring some of that stuff out. The first round of interview emails have been sent, so hopefully we'll have some people on soon. So stay tuned for that. We're really excited. Maybe hopefully getting some people, returning guests, maybe some new guests, all that stuff. But for now, you're just stuck with me, myself and I. So I decided to make the move now. Um, I was still kind of contemplating it, but I was so sick this weekend. I decided to move it to Wednesday just to give myself some more time um, to, to recover before I came back on here. And, and you might be able to hear it in my voice right now. Um, I'm, I think I'm covering it kind of well, but maybe not. <laughs> it's definitely nasally. Uh, I, I'm still sick. Um, I kind of did it to myself. I'll, we'll go into the story of why I'm still feeling sick probably uh, because of Sunday. But on Saturday and on Friday, I was really not doing well. Um, it's just, uh, I don't know if it's a cold or whatever, but it was, it had me on my, my butt. It had me on my butt pretty good. Friday, I had tr a lot of trouble concentrating on things. Uh, Monday as well, I had a lot of trouble concentrating on things. Um, and just, you know, runny nose, coughing, Friday and, and Saturday, very sore throat, very hurt to swallow, um, Friday and Saturday. It was not good. I was not doing, I was not doing great, but I'm feeling a lot better now. Um, and that's why it was moved. And that's why it was moved. So I just, I was like, all right, we'll do it Wednesday. This is going to be great. I'll record a really great podcast on Monday. 
or on Tuesday, Monday came around, was still sick. Tuesday came around today, I'm, I'm still sick, and it's just what it is. So I didn't want to go without a podcast. I definitely didn't want to do a throwback. I'd rather do a shorter podcast than a throwback podcast, to be honest, um, this time around. So that's what I decided to do. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, I The biggest thing I want to talk about, the biggest thing I want to talk about on this podcast And for people that don't care, I'm sorry, but I'm just so excited. I have to go over it. And it's it's it contributes to why I'm still sick today. Um, So I I play rec basketball now. I play I play in a league. I played a basketball league is the first time I've ever I played as a when I was really young, maybe like early high school, late middle school. I played in a basketball league, but I wasn't good at basketball at that point. Um, And I was still really big and stuff like that. So I joined a basketball league, and this is my first time playing organized basketball on a team. Uh, for people that don't know, or if this is the first time listening, I was never a basketball player in my entire life. A couple years ago, as I was losing lots and lots of weight, I lost 200 pounds. Part of that was picking up basketball. And I truly believe all the places I've lived have helped me become the basketball player I am today. Um, you know, I, I really started playing in Spokane, Washington. My friend Josh Reddy, former producer of this show, really showed me a lot of different things, helped me helped me get better with my left hand, uh, showed me the best ways to play defense, all that stuff. And, like, it's a very team-oriented screens, inside game. Like, that's how Spokane, Washington is, because it's Gonzaga, right? Like, that's what Gonzaga is. Think of Drew Timmy. Think of Kelly Olynyk, Think of, like, all those guys that – uh, Sabonis, like those are Gonzaga guys. So that's how they play out there. So that's how I kind of learned the fundamentals of basketball, you can almost say. Then I went to Hartford, Connecticut, home of UConn, right? UConn's right up the street. This is a lot of ISO ball. So what this got me better at was offensively, I was still kind of the same, right? I was decent inside. And when I was on with my three-point, I was, I was really good. I rebounded a lot, all that good stuff. Hustle player. I was a hustle player. But I, and, and there's where I learned how to ISO defense really well. Like, I, I really started to learn better defense. I started to learn how to put my chest into somebody, not foul. Like, all that good stuff, how to cut off lanes, how to try to get steals. I wasn't good at it yet. But that's where I really started to learn this stuff. And I think my basketball came together when I moved to Indianapolis, Hoosier Town, Indiana. And... um that there's a lot of team basketball there and there's a lot of screen setting and opening up, um, opening up shooting lanes and stuff like that. And the, that's where the most important part of my learning basketball happened because not, I, I was already good with team basketball. I started, you know, my ISO defense got a lot better and I was starting to play better, better players, like really, really getting in on defense and learning defense and going against guys that could definitely go by me, but like just going up against the competition to go up against the competition. Right. So, but in Indiana, I learned how to find a cutting lane, how to cut off ball, like how to do, do things of that nature, like how to get open without the ball, which was like probably the most important thing I could ever learn. Like, the one thing I learned spacing, I learned where I should be on the court. I learned how I should, how, where I should play, where I should be on offense, where I should be on defense, where my best spots are, where my hot spots are, where I'm not as good as a player. And that's just because the people I played with were, were very knowledgeable in basketball. They all coached basketball. They all loved basketball and shout out to those guys in Indy, man. I, I miss playing with them and they really helped me get to that part of my, my basketball career. So now I get to Dallas And I remember the first time I played in Dallas, which is like a mix of everything, but not a high mix. It's definitely the lowest, I want to say the lowest skill set I've ever played in, but it's just not, it's, it's a lot of mixture of everything. So it doesn't usually form well together, but when you get the right people, it's really fun to play with kind of thing. And, um, I remember the first time I played here in Dallas, I, really dominated because I just played I didn't I didn't shoot a lot but I played a lot under the basket and I got a lot of rebounds and a lot of putbacks and I I, you know I'd get open like I said off ball and I'd set screens get open on rolls and just pick and roll with guys that knew to pass inside and just would really dominate just doing layups and twos and 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 just kind of dominating the competition like underneath and when I learned like oh like I can actually be successful multiple ways here 
that's when it all came together for me. And then finally, when I started playing and my three point shot started rolling, like going in, that's when I was an overall just complete player at whatever, you know, the skill set I'm at now. Like, I'm not going to say I can go against the college D1 or D2 or probably even D3 and be successful one on one, but I can definitely hold my own playing basketball now. And it's just because of all these different places I've been and the weight I've lost and the endurance I've built up and, and all that stuff. And I've really enjoyed it and I'm so glad that I've done it. And here we are today. Okay. All that to build up for Sunday. So last Sunday, I played my second league game. We played our first league game. I had seven points all at the end of the game. Um, I struggled in the beginning. Like I said, that was my first. I guess we could start with the first game. I don't think I went over it. So I had about I had seven points, somewhere around 12 rebounds, uh, somewhere around five, six assists, four steals. That's Those were the stats. Those are the stats I have. I, I will... I will you know, I didn't write them down or anything like that. I kind of played it back in my head to figure out what, what would I have because I didn't count them at the time either. Points are the easiest ones to recall. It's the rebounds, assists, and steals. Basically, other than rebounds, everything came at the end of the game. Everything came at the end of the game. I, I really struggled in the first half. I took a couple threes. They did not. They were not even close to good. Um, I, I bricked a turnaround jumper. Um, I was not doing good in the first half. Got a lot of rebounds, got a couple assists, but nothing nothing to write home about. It wasn't until basically the end of the game. We were down like 15 or 12 or something like that when I started turning it around. I hit a, I hit a layup, uh, charged the lane, got the pass, faked left, guy went for a block, went right. Um, that was my first two points of my career, I should even say. like th Those were technically the first points of my career, right? Because I've never really played in a league before. So I got those two points. Then I came back and I hit a three, um, and that's you know another three points. And then I came back and I got another layup. So that's how I got to my seven right there. And those were all as we were down fifteen. So then you know you hit the two, you're down thirteen. I don't remember if it was fifteen, but let's just let's just imagine. So let's either fifteen or thirteen. Now let's say thirteen because I think it was thirteen. So we're down twelve or eleven, and now we're down uh, was it eight? Oh, God, I got to do math on air. Um, then I got in this, you know, handoff. I'm going to the lane, get doubled, bounce pass underneath. Guys on the other side, layup. And we're, we're chipping away. We get it all the way to about to five. Guy, one of our guys hit a layup. Now it's a two or a three-point game, all right? Now, I have been on fire so far in this quarter. I am definitely feeling my shot right now. I've only taken that one three, but I just hit it, right? So I'm feeling my shot right now. My other dude here is feeling his shot. Like, he's also doing work. We came all the way back to make it a three-point game. So they're, we're fouling at the end of the game. They get a one-and-one, and, one, and their player throws the ball because uh, our guy's talking smack. He's trying to get in his head as he goes to the line. He gets so mad, he throws the ball at our player. Our player turns around, you know, what are you doing? You know, they don't get in each other's face, really, but they're arguing back and forth now because he just threw the ball at them. Now, throwing a ball at a player is a technical. That should have been a tech. The tech was not called. Not only was a tech not called, because they were going back and forth at each other, they decided to call the game with 14 seconds left. Now, for anybody that's wondering why that's frustrating, we are down three. They have a three free throw going on. He, he has missed all his free throws so, so far. So, you know, hypothetically, he can make that one. Most likely, he's missing his one and one. We're getting the ball back. Not only that, it should have been a tech. So if he has a one and one and misses, they, we got technical foul shot. And we get the ball back. So even if we miss, we could, be, we could technically be down two, right? We could be down two with the ball in 13 seconds left. Now, if say he makes his first free throw and misses the second, right? Or make, yeah, makes, makes one, misses the second. And then we get our technical free throw. If we make that one, we're down three. The only way he could really have put away the game for sure, and he wouldn't, still wouldn't have done it, but the way he could have really made it hard to come back is if he hit both free throws. But he hasn't hit any. He, he's taken like seven or eight, and he's missed all of them. So there's one of the chances he's going to hit two in a row now. 
So like this, this, this calling of the game because of that changed the entire compl- like we we were going to come back. I truly feel we were going to come back, but we lost. We lost by three. So that was how the first game went. I struggled because I just was I was nervous. I was nervous. But then the second game comes around. I was not going to go to this game. I was feeling sick. I was like, I shouldn't do this. Like, I'm, I'm not well. I'm not well. I shouldn't go to this game. And um, I realized that, like, if I don't go to this game, we don't have a lot of guys. One of our guys was on vacation. We did have another addition to our team. I didn't know it was going to be there. But one of our guys is on vacation. I'm like, we're only going to have five. If one other guy doesn't show up, we have to forfeit. So I show up to the game, sick as a dog. I don't know why that's a, a, a thing. I don't want to say that anymore. I was very sick. And um, I am at this point, like, I'm just going to try to make it through. I'm just going to I'm gonna get my rebounds, play defense. If I get shots, I'll try to put them up. But I'm just going to make it through. Wasn't a good game plan for me. The first half, we were, we were down bad. I think we, we were maybe down 15 in the first half. Uh, number 31 on the other team, I don't know his name, uh, white dude, looked like he played some college ball, like he had, he had good skill set, good shot, um, definitely knew how to play a team game. Um, he was on fire, hitting every single shot, three-pointers, driving to the lane. He even hit a half-court shot at the end of the first half to put them up. I think it was 15. And our energy was low. I played the entire first half. I was beat. I was I I could have passed out on the bench. Like I was so sick. And uh, so I start the second half on the bench, and I'm sitting there. And the the other dude here, he's he's probably our best scorer, right? And we're sitting there on the bench, and we're looking at each other. And we're like, man, our energy is bad. Like we just look like we've already lost. We got we got 20 minutes. Like we could do this. And we, you know, I get, and, and, and I go, so I go, I have this mode I go when I play, usually when I play baseball, where I kind of like, I could be a little crazy on the field, but it's more of a mentality of a basketball or a football player, but I always brought it to a baseball field. It always helped me play baseball. Well, I brought that mentality out for basketball, where it was just pure adrenaline, and I was, I was ready to roll. I was like, I, I'm going to pick up this energy. No one wants to pick up this energy. I'm, I'm dying over here on the bench of sickness, of illness. And I'm going to pick up this energy. I am going to do this. So I get up and I start yelling and screaming and, you know, let's go and, and clapping and pointing at people and talking smack. So about 15 minutes left in the game. We're still down about 15-ish points. Um, we're, still getting, we're still getting smoked. We're kind of keeping pace. And I go, all right, I'm going in the game. I'm taking 31. I'm taking 31. I, he's not he, – I'm doing it. The guy that was on him was like, do it. Like, I'm good. Like, he's cooking me right now. And I'm like, I'm taking 31. And I go over. Um, this is on a free throw that we're, we have a timeout on a free throw. So we're coming back to a free throw. And I go over to my teammate in the backcourt as their team's taking the free throw. And the part of my language, but I grab his, I grab his shirt and I say, Devin, that dude's not scoring one more fucking point. Not one more point. And he's like, okay, okay, okay. Let me tell you something. He did not score a single point when I was on him in the second half. He took maybe seven shots, six shots, missed them all, including two where he actually, we switched off. But this is towards the end of the game. I was already in his head. I didn't let him off the three-point line. He tried to drive, couldn't make it inside, had to pass out. Had a couple turnovers because he was trying to get around. Tried to, tried to bully, wasn't letting him bully inside. I was a mad dog at this point. I am yelling, screaming, talking so much smack to him. Saying, you better pass out of this one, boy. You better pass out of it. You ain't, you ain't getting in here. And he would pass out of it because he did not want any. He didn't want any of the smoke in the second half. So with him out of the game, they couldn't score. They had one other dude hit a couple threes, but they couldn't score. He was their, he was their points. And I, I took him out of the game. So we're starting to claw our way back, claw our way back, claw our way back. 
they're not scoring on their side, but we're, we're getting two points here. We're getting a free throw there. Another two points here. So we make it all the way down, and there's, uh, I don't know, maybe two minutes left. And we're down five. Now it's time for the real Jordan story, okay? So in the first half, I only had two points. In the second half, I counted after the game. I thought of every shot I took. I added up every shot I took right after the game. I had two points in the first half. I scored 18 in the second half, 1-8. I scored them all at the very end of the game. I said two minutes left. There may have been three and a half-ish minutes left, okay? So I get a three. I get an open three. Swish it, right? We're coming back down. We get a stop. Coming back down. Again, set a screen. Open three. Boom. Hit it. Now, now, now we're up one. Coming back around again. Got another three. Boom. So, so for those counting, that's now 11 points. Nine of them in the last three possessions. I hit one more three towards, towards the end. I also hit a layup. Couple twos. I, I I just the end of the game. This all all eighteen had to have been the last four or five minutes of the game, and I don't know. I just I just took on a new persona when I was on the court, and we came all the way back. That was my flu game. Um, I was I don't even know if my team knew I was so sick. Like you could tell because I was nasally, and I I probably sounded it, but they probably didn't realize. Like I. I was not feeling well whatsoever. Like I didn't, I felt sick, sick. And that was my Jordan flu game. That was it. I, I was sick. I had 20 points, like six boards, four assists, three steals, shot eight for 10 or whatever it was from the field, four for six from three. I missed two threes, both of them wide open, by the way. The other ones were contested. The other the two I missed were wide open, obviously. And it was amazing. I couldn't believe that I was able to pull that off. The reason I even want to bring this up on a podcast, other than I love, I'm going to love telling people this because, like, one, it actually happened. Like, that was amazing. Like, I, I went off in a basketball game. If you would have said five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago, hey, Chris, in a couple of years, you're going to play a league basketball game. And not only are you going to shut down the best player on the other team, but you're also going to, you know, lead the scoring charge to come back in the end of the game. Oh, by the way, you're going to be the leading scorer with 20. I would be like, yeah, right. Because I was, I was overweight. I did the big guys fade away. So for people that don't know, and people that play basketball, you probably played with a very overweight, heavy set guy before, right? And what we do is we back down because we got a lot of weight. So we get back all the way down to the basket. And then we get to the basket. But we're overweight. So we can't go up and, like, do a layup. Because we're going to get blocked. Because we just don't have that. We don't have bunnies like that. So we do the big, I call it the big guy fade away. Where it's like you turn around and you fade all the way out. And you just pray that it goes in. Now, today, today the way I played when I was big helps me a lot. Because I shot a lot of threes. Because I couldn't drive and I couldn't do anything inside. But also that fadeaway, like whenever I played basketball, I did it. So it's my my little bump fade, and I've added a bump to it too to give it a little more space. But it's pretty good now because I just I've did it. I've done it for twenty five years playing basketball. But so that was that's the big guy fade. That's all I used to do. So if you told that if you told that guy you are going to be the lead, he may I might have said yeah, of course I'm going to hit twenty threes. But it it really was threes. But it was just. The defense thing is probably would have would have would have been like, whoa, that's crazy. Cause I never I never would have thought I could be this good defensively on a basketball court. I really didn't. I didn't think I could take on the best players on the other side. I mean, I've I've now played against I mean, the guy I played against played in college in that last game, right? I've played against guys that play in college. I actually played in, in a rec like just a rec center game against a D one player. And I was able to contain him to the outside. Like, I wasn't, he didn't drive on me. He didn't cross me up. Nothing. Like, I don't get crossed up. I keep my footing, footing really well. Don't really get pump faked. I don't jump on it. Like, I, I've never 
would have thought I could actually be that player. So it's really cool to be that player. And it's good to say that I'm that player. And I'm not saying that someone listening right now wouldn't come cross me up. But you know what? No one has yet. So you could be the first. But it's it's great to talk about. So I'm, I hope people out there are like listening to this basketball story. Because if it happens more often, I'll probably talk about it more often. I'm going to talk about it more often than baseball because baseball season has been it's been a wash so far. I mean, literally, we we were rained out for like two months and then we just came back. And, and I don't know how much longer I'm going to do baseball this summer. We're going to see. But the basketball, I mean, with the level I've been able to play at recently and it's just perfect timing for me with with everything. So super happy about it. Glad I could talk about it on this podcast. To be honest, I wanted to go over some other stuff, but I don't know if I can. Um, I, I I don't know if I can continue. I'm not feeling too well, um, and I need to go drink a gallon of water. My throat's starting to get a little a little raspy and nasally, and you can probably hear it in the thing as well. Um, getting a little quieter and everything, but I got to get out the story. I really wanted to get out, so I'm okay with it. But um, so sorry about that. It's being a little shorter of an episode. Um, but it was a really fun story, so I really hope you enjoyed that. <sighs> Sorry, I had to take a breath. Okay. Well, if you guys enjoyed that, listen to some older episodes. We got some really good ones out there. Um, there's a big push going for Jazz Cow right now, which we talked about a few episodes ago. Uh, ago. Um, go check that out, Jazz Cow TV on Instagram. Um, they're really making a push. John's really making a push. So go check that stuff out and. Um, I just wanted to give him a little shout out because they've been doing really good. Also, Slade Ham's doing uh, ha- he's he's he, he's uh, putting together a new book, so uh, go check him out as well at Slade Ham on Instagram and Twitter. Um, if you want to go check him out as well, what other shout outs can I give? I guess go check out uh, Good Guy with a Pun. They're still doing their press tours and things like that, and um, you can see all the fun stuff they're doing if you go check out Good Guy with a Pun as well. And see what Julius is up to. That's my guy. That's the that's a big big friend of the show right there. And Dimitri, go see what he's up to. Big friends of the show. All right, I have to get off air. I'm sorry, everybody. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Mad Props Pod. But definitely follow us on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter slash X, LinkedIn, TikTok, and YouTube at Schnabel Studios. Please subscribe to us on YouTube. We just passed 300 subscribers. Woo! <coughs> As you heard, I probably shouldn't have done that. Anyway, I'm so thankful for everybody. Let me take a minute here before I get off. I just want to say, we just reached 300, 300. We just reached 300 subscribers on YouTube, and I'm telling you right now, it means so much to me that 300 people have found this channel interesting enough where they want to subscribe. We really only post podcasts and shorts. The shorts are a lot of the video work I do, kind of showing it off. The podcast is usually about dumb BS that I like. And to know that 300 people out there liked it so much that they want to subscribe to it as well means so much to me. So thank you to everyone that subscribed. And if you're new to subscribing, we appreciate you being here, and we thank you as well. Thank you guys so much for being a subscriber on YouTube. And if you're not already, please hit that subscribe button because we, we appreciate every single person that does it. All right, everybody. I have to get off this thing. Thank you guys so much for listening to Matt Props. Make sure you like and subscribe. Um, the podcast, give us five stars if you're listening on Spotify, Apple, or anywhere else you get your podcast. Check out schnabelstudios.com if you want to see more. Schnabelstudios.com slash Matt Props pod if you want to see more Matt Props. And if you want to see more of just me, you can find me at, at Chris Schnabel on Instagram or at, at Chris M. Schnabel on Twitter slash X. Thank you guys so much. We will see you next time. Hopefully with a guest. I have some in the pipeline. I'm just waiting for them to get get available, and then we'll have some more guests coming. But until then, you got me here. You got me here. By the way, I'm repping my boy J.J. Redick. Just got hired by uh, the Los Angeles Lakers. He was one of my favorite Orlando Magic players back in the day. All right, guys. Thank you so much for paying attention to me. Thank you so much for listening. I'm going to let you go. Obviously, I'm getting delusional. So see you later. This has been Matt Props. Thank you.